Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Geared On For One. Today we're going to be building a dynamometer. Now you're probably wondering, what's a dynamometer? Most people don't call it a dynamometer, they call it a dyno. This is the thing that people go with their souped up cars to see how much torque they have and how much horsepower they have. And that's what we're also going to be using it for. Now this dynamometer isn't going to work like most. Most of them work off of inertia. I'm not going to do that because that requires a lot of weight. I'm going to build my dynamometer to work off of electromagnetic induction. The idea is that if you move magnets, in this case spinning them, in the proximity of something that conducts electricity, cutting the lines of flux coming out of the magnets causes little electrical currents to swirl around in the metal, which causes a, an electromagnetic field, which then in this case is going to pull on the magnets and try to slow them down. So if I'd spin this engine up and then put this disc in proximity to it, you'll notice it slows the engine right down. Where, whereas the engine would just freewheel otherwise. See? So that's the idea. And the turning force on this disc will be measured by this little scale which will measure the torque of the engine. And so what we're gonna do with this is we, we slow the engine down with this, applying torque to the engine. We use the sensor on the engine to measure the engine's RPM. Torque times RPM is output power. So that will tell us the output power of the engine. And finally, the next thing we're gonna measure is air pressure. This is an analog air pressure sensor. This will go into my air compressor to tell me how much pressure the engine is using or what volume of air the engine is consuming. This will allow us to measure efficiency. So because we know the torque, because we'll know the RPM from this sensor, that tells us the power out. What we need to know is the power in. That will tell us the overall efficiency of the engine and let us find the engine's efficiency band. This is how we make the engine as efficient as possible. All right, so first we gotta assemble the dynamometer. So this is going to allow us to move the dynamometer closer to and further away from the engine's flywheel, which is going to allow us to apply a variable amount of torque to the engine. Now it's more range of movement than what we need, significantly more, but that's okay. It's better to have too much than too little. So this is what this disc mounts to. And also I've added something special. Oops. I've added something special is I wanna add this disc of magnets behind it. And I'm not 100% that this is gonna help, but I think it will. See, here's the, the theory, is that being able to, if you could pull this magnetic flux more into this uh, aluminum disc, it's gonna do more breaking force. And I'm just gonna see if I could feel any kind of difference with or without this secondary disc. So the secondary disc should cause the magnetic field to get pulled more through the aluminum. It's really hard to tell. I don't know if it does anything. It probably doesn't. But we're gonna have it on there anyways. Let me show you how this works now. So this wheel pushes this arm onto that load cell. So I have an unsuspecting block of wood. show you something. You'll notice when I spin the engine one way, 
the stator disc follows, so spin it the other way. Stator disc follows, it needs to be a little bit closer. There we go. Go the other way. The engine's a little wobbly, but I think that's okay, because it even if this disc hits this disc, it's just causing more friction, and that's what I'm intending to do anyways. I, I haven't said this yet on, on any of my new videos ever since I've been back, but something interesting has been happening with the channel. I've noticed is that the more videos I make, the more I lose subscribers. And this is confusing to me, but I guess it makes sense is there's a lot of people that have been here for four years waiting for me to make a video, and now they're mad at me. So... Um, if you want to see the rest of this engine project, that's going to be a separate video. That's going to be uh, maybe in a couple weeks. So don't forget to subscribe so that maybe my subscriber counts start going in the right direction. Um, and then you'll be able to see that. Now we need to install the air pressure sensor into the air compressor. And then we can get to testing. The air compressor has a port right here, which I can connect directly to my pressure sensor right off the tank so <laughs> Jesus all right we finally got the plug out it was a struggle I think I've taken that out before and I might have put some of that uh, like thread paste on it instead of thread tape maybe that wasn't my best idea but anyways I hope this pressure sensor works we have written some code, some really rough code. I, I hope it's right. We're going to be logging data with the computer over here using a Python script. We're going to start the engine. So I'm going to roll the inductive sensor back a little bit. Turn the pressure up just a tad. I'm shutting the air compressor off. We're going to do a test where I just peg it right at 40 PSI. Um, and I'm going to want to start with this pretty close. Otherwise, it'll take off and just zoom really high RPMs. And then I'm going to go as close as I can. And then just start to kind of back it off. Um, just to get a clear graph of how the torque and RPMs kind of work on this engine. And we're just going to let the air compressor run for this test. getting scary I had to kill it I don't want this magnet wheel to explode on me so we've learned that the engine has a power band right around 1250 rpm at 40 psi we don't really know much other than that now I want to kind of do a different test see there's something that's been on my mind a lot that I've been trying to figure out a question um, what is the most efficient way to fit, fill the, the cylinder with air is it to wait until the cylinder is all the way at the top and just coming down, dump a little bit of air in the cylinder and let it expand. 
or is it to start filling the cylinder as soon as the piston hits top dead center and keep filling it until it opens the exhaust valve? Now, I think the most efficient way to do it is to dump all of the compressed air in when the piston's just leaving top dead center and then shut the air off and let the air expand. Um, ChatGPT thoroughly disagrees with me though, and it says the most efficient way to do it is to insulate the entire engine <laughs> so that you, you have adiabatic expansion and fill the, air with, or fill the cylinder with air the entire downstroke of the piston. I, I just think that that would cause the air to not expand as much as it could otherwise. I think it, absorbing heat from the atmosphere is good. Uh, but what we're going to do now is we're going to we set up a PID loop to try to run the engine at 1250 RPM as much as it can. So if it, if it needs to shut down the inlet valve sooner, it will. If it needs to hold the inlet valve open for longer, it will. Um, and that just depends on how much pressure it has and how much load it's under. So I'm gonna kind of try to set the load and hold it there and then increase the inlet pressure so it keeps shortening the, the valve timing so it's open for less and less and less time. for the course. Um, the engine just ripped itself apart because the PID loop was just out of tune again. I had it working perfectly a couple days ago, but it seems like every little tweak I make to the engine's design, it can't handle it, so it just rips itself apart. Okay, so actually we got pretty lucky here. We didn't break anything. I installed too short of a bolt, and that caused it to be able to thread out too easily. And so it just threaded itself out and somehow nothing broke. I am shocked. Maybe not. I thought it worked. You know what? I bet it is. I bet I know what it is. My exhaust valve isn't opening far enough. It's not opening at all. Oh, there's the problem. Remember when I said that the engine didn't break? Well, it turns out that it did um, because there's supposed to be some geometry here that's missing. Um, and that geometry pushes on the bottom of the piston skirt, which is right here, which opens the exhaust valve, if you see that open now. But if I run the engine, put it at bottom dead center, Exhaust valve does not open. So I gotta reprint it. We'll try again tomorrow, I guess. So this actually pulls the exhaust valve open every downstroke. But when it's in a power stroke, that doesn't work. Anyways, we're not gonna do anything else on this tonight. I'll repair the engine. Um, and learn a lesson and then next time we make a video we'll be able to get some real data and you'll be able to see everything you need to know thanks for watching